Greetings, greenhouse people, and welcome to another installment of Tech On Demand, where our goal is always to bring you tips, tricks, and information to produce your best crops ever. I'm your host, Bill Calkins, and I'm happy to be joined this time by two knowledgeable people from Profile Products, and that's the company behind Hydrofiber, which is the soil media substrate that's becoming more and more popular with growers every year because of its positive impact on root development, water uptake, as well as increased efficiencies across the board, including storage, cost savings, and all sorts of benefits and sustainability, which I know my guests are going to talk a lot about. Daniel Norton is the Senior Technical Specialist at Profile, and Jennifer Neuer is the Director of Business Development, and I'm excited to have them both. And we are here this time to talk garden mum production, and it's very timely right now in an effort to present some tips and tricks to produce an amazing crop that's going to grab attention at retail and in the landscape, because I know we all know that this year is going to be very big at retail in the fall. So welcome, you guys. Hey, Bill. Thanks for having us. Hey, Bill. Thanks for having us. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. So we kind of have spring in full gear right now, if you're listening to this in real time. So what are you guys seeing and hearing out there in the marketplace, you know, whether it's related to growing media and substrates or really anything else you're seeing out there uh, in greenhouses or garden centers? Yeah, I think, Bill, and we were talking about it before we started this conversation. I mean, you know, everybody is having a record-breaking year. There are so many people out and about um, buying plants, and growers are um, scrambling, uh, frankly, to continue to keep up with the, the demand. And uh, everybody put in 20 to 30% more production, and what we're hearing across the marketplace is that production's already gone, and everybody is trying to put in a fourth or a fifth round. Um, and, uh, you know, because the demand has been so good, raw, raw materials, pots, tags, uh, genetics are harder to come by right now because everybody's been snatching them up to try to get additional rounds in. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I'm hearing the exact same thing out there. I think that uh, spring is going full blast. And uh, like I said, I think that really bodes well for fall. And you know, you talked a little bit about the shortages or at least challenges in getting some of those inputs and raw materials. And I'm definitely hearing that's one of the big stories this year. So, and I know that substrates and soil media is, is part of uh, what, what's on growers' minds um, and that those raw materials are getting harder to come by. Is this a short-term issue or something that growers need to be considering long-term? I guess taking the advantage of having you guys right now to, uh, to ask you some of those tough questions before we get into mums. Yeah, no, I think that's an excellent um, question. And, you know, right now, raw materials are really tight. Um, I have heard that uh, some peat suppliers have started to harvest more peat. Um, however, um, you know, even if growers can get uh, the raw materials, freight capacity continues to be an issue. Um, for every one load of uh, material, uh, there's, there's uh, 10 people that want it, and uh, there's just not enough capacity to go around. Um, I think demand is continuing to kind of outpace uh, what's available. And uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of time until we, uh, you know, right side that or figure that out as an, as an industry. Some things will probably get a little bit more um, normal uh, sooner than others. But I think it's gonna, we're going to be in this situation for a while. And, you know, I had an opportunity to hear a webinar yesterday from a guy that was talking about change and how to create change in a, in a, um, in a company and he said, he said, get curious about the alternatives. Uh, when you do, um, it will allow you to find a solution. And I, I really honestly couldn't agree with him more. You know, I think uh, everybody knows the importance of trying new products and trying new things and putting trials in place. But a lot of times we just let ourselves say we're, we're too busy. We're so busy with spring production. We can't handle another trial. But I think, you know, this year in particular is teaching us that we need to get all pretty curious about the alternatives um, because the alternatives are probably what are going to allow us to get and stay in business. And, uh, you know, Hydrofiber has been in the marketplace now for um, just under 10 years. And, um, you know, while we have a lot of growers as customers and blenders as customers, we just celebrated our, our 100th machine installation at NG Hymos a few weeks ago. Um, there's still a lot of growers that are not familiar with our technology, and we really want to you know, use this opportunity to help them understand how they can possibly use Hydrofiber to help them get through this issue right now where short where raw materials are very hard to come by. And that makes a lot of sense. And you can, I mean, we can talk about shortages or challenges in supply chain all day long, but really I think what, what the, the listeners and growers out there need to know are the alternatives and what you can do, because we kind of have to accept that there are going to be disruptions, but 
you know, what, what can we do, whether it is soil or plant material or, or tags or whatever it is, you know, and that's just looking at our industry. That's, that's not even take, thinking uh, big picture about what's going on in all of industry. So I totally agree. There are going to be a lot of opportunities that come out of this. So now that we talked a little bit about this sort of high level market intel, I think it's time to dig right into our topic of garden mums. So why don't you guys go ahead and share your screen. And for those of you watching the video, you can follow along. If you are just listening to this podcast, you'll find a link to the slideshow in the show notes that you can go to and, uh, and check it out or go over it with your team. So we're right now, we're kind of deep into the, the peak shipping weeks for rooted liners for garden mums and, and growers are beginning to transition from this insanity of spring that we just talked about to fall production. Daniel, I'm looking to you to uh, maybe start by uh, providing a little bit of an update on best practices for growing mums, specifically sure. using hydrofiber and what growers need to know if they are using this product or like Jennifer said, if they plan on starting some trials. Absolutely, Bill. Yeah, thanks for uh, having us uh, today again. I just want to take one quick minute just to talk about um, hydrofiber and, um, you know, because of, you know, some of these raw material shortages that are out there, people are looking at a lot of different alternatives and just want to touch on very quickly our process. Um, you know, all of hydrofiber is made just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, this is a, a, a picture of our factory there. We source all of the pine chips, um, they're virgin chips, that's a byproduct of the lumber industry from um, about 70 to 80 miles uh, away from our plant. Uh, so it's all pretty much locally sourced. And we have a very highly technical process that we use to refine the wood chips to make hydrofiber as you see it today. And I just wanted to touch very briefly on this in that basically what we're doing is we're taking the wood chips, the pine bark, we're putting it at a set percentage into our digester, if you will. Um, it's, it's basically getting fast cook in the matter of uh, about 10 minutes uh, and it's under heat pressure um, and steam. And after it goes through our digester where it's fast cooked, it then goes through a set of very large plates where we rub those fibers apart. Then it goes through our dryer where in less than 10 seconds, those fibers are dried very rapidly to a very low moisture content to where they're then um, compressed and packaged into uh, whether it's a tower, 50 pound bale, et cetera. And you can actually see an image of what the fiber looks like there. It looks almost kind of like cotton candy uh, a little bit. So it's very fibrous, very interesting. And, um, you know, a lot of growers have been using hydrofiber um, as a, um, a amendment in their growing media um, and a lot of growers start with uh, using it as a perlite substitute. And as you mentioned, the topic for today is um, growing chrysanthemums with hydrofiber. And um, since, since we brought hydrofiber to the market in about 2015, um, mums and poinsettias were two of the key crops that many growers really wanted to make sure that they got um, you know, test cycles under before they made the commitment. And this is an image that I took probably the last time that I was in a commercial greenhouse to see mums uh, in, I believe it was fall of 2019. And this particular grower is actually growing at 45% hydrofiber. So just for perspective, a lot of our customers will start at 30% hydrofiber. And then um, once they get some, um, some practice under their belt, they learn some of the nuances of growing in a, in a hydrofiber mix. Um, we're seeing a lot of growers start to ratchet up the percent. And, you know, chrysanthemum seems to be a really good stepping point for growers to move from a 20, 30 percent inclusion rate up to 40 or 50 percent. And uh, the reason there's a couple of reasons for that. And number one, you know, everybody knows that, um, you know, that chrysanthemums are a relatively easy crop to root. And um, so a lot of growers see that as an opportunity. Um, and then also a lot of mums are grown in larger containers. So there's a lot of vo soil volume uh, that needs to be used. And so, um, you know, hydrofiber tends to add a lot more air space to the mix, particularly as you go up to 40, 50%. That in turn helps root development. Um, and, you know, if you get good roots, that makes the plant much stronger, more resistant to um, you know, diseases that may come in. And, uh, you know, we're just seeing a lot of people have a lot of success with it, especially at higher inclusion rates. So it's, it's given the situation that we're in right now, it's really apt. So 
you know, if, if we're just talking about growers that are um, just starting with hydrofiber, you know, what are some keys to success? So now we're, we're, we're not even talking about going like 50% and above, you know, we're just talking about, you know, 20 to 50%, what do growers need to know? Number one, it comes down to irrigation management. Um, and this is really true for any time that you make the switch to a new substrate, you want to learn, you know, what are some of the different things about how to water in that crop. So uh, two, two things that come to mind in specific with hydrofiber, whether you're growing 20 or 50% is surface drying. So um, basically what we see is the top centimeter tends to form a crust. Um, you know, it could form like a day after irrigating. And one of the challenges that we've seen, especially early on, is that growers, if, if they're not in tune with going and picking up pots um, to determine or pulling the, the pots off the, uh, the root ball to look at the root zone, um, and they're just doing a visual of the bay itself, they can be tricked into watering sooner. Now, the good news is about hydrofiber is that um, we're doing a really good job of oxygenating, oxygenating the root zone, which makes the mix more forgiving if you do happen to overwater. Um, but it, it's still something to keep in mind. And the surface drying, if you really, um, you can use it to your advantage to help control your fungus gnat um, as well as uh, control algae. So um, direct stick approved. Over the past couple of years, we've seen a lot more growers move to direct stick production. And, um, you know, we get asked questions all the time. You know, if I go from a peat perlite mix to a peat hydrofiber mix, how's that going to change? The good news is, is that we haven't seen any issues um, with direct stick uh, production programs uh, for most growers that have done it. I mean, it's really the same type of things that you need to look out for in a traditional mix is, okay, you've got a very small cutting in a large pot with a lot of exposed surface area of soil. And that kind of plays into my next point is you need to keep that an eye out for algae issues, whether it's a peat perlite mix or a peat hydrofiber mix. Anytime you have that much surface area exposed, you're going to have more of a tendency for algae to develop, especially early on, because a lot of growers will tend to um, mist and always err on the heavy side of mist until the cuttings get their roots. So um, it's really kind of a, a balancing act to make sure that you give enough water to the cutting to stay turgid, um, but you know, still mitigate your algae issues. A lot of our customers have reported having success uh, using like clean grow. And what they've told us is that uh, it works really well as a preventative within the first 10 to 14 days of production. Um, optimizing lime rates. So a lot of our customers were starting with 80 peat, 20 perlite, and um, they tend to go to 70, 30. Uh, we've done a lot of research uh, on this, and we did a really nice study with uh, Dr. Ryan Dixon when he was at University of New Hampshire back in, I believe it was 2017. Basically, what we learned and what our customers need to know is that for every 10% peat that you remove and replace with hydrofiber, you want to reduce your lime rate by 10%. And this, this really boils down to hydrofiber has much lower buffering capacity, um, so you just don't need as much lime, essentially. Um, still, and this, this point is true for standard mixes as well as hydrofiber mixes. A lot of growers to manage fusarium and mum production like to keep their pH between uh, six, five and seven uh, with a target of six, eight. Um, when, you, when you keep the, the pH higher, uh, it's going to help you manage fusarium better. Um, now you will see with some cultivars, um, can start to get some iron deficiency. And so it's important to keep an eye out for these things and supplement with a chelated iron, for example, um, as needed. Uh, don't be afraid to go high. Um, and, and so I kind of touched on this when we looked at the slide of the bay of the mums that were growing in 45% hydrofiber. Again, chrysanthemums tends to be the crop where growers, once they get comfortable with spring, spring production growing in hydrofiber for the first time, they're like, okay, well, maybe I can go up 10%. Um, we've seen enough uh, mom crops in the field with 40, 50% hydrofiber inclusion rates that we feel very comfortable with, um, with making those changes. Um, we don't see issues with um, nitrogen fixation up to 50%. We don't see issues uh, really with 
major differences in water management when you go up to 50%. Um, so a lot of a lot of the same things at 30% are going to be very similar when you go to 50%, for example. So um, now on this, I've, I've got a couple of slides uh, because a couple of years ago, you know, we just wanted to see how high can we push the envelope. And, you know, we've got greenhouses at our facility in Conover. We do a lot of R&D there. Uh, we've got a great team. And, um, but we took some of these recipes and we put them out to some of our customers. We wanted them to try them out compared to their production. And um, for those that aren't, that are just listening to the audio, um, what we have is an image in front of us. On the left-hand side are two pots that were grown in a 45% hydrofiber mix with peat. And then on the right-hand side, we've got two plants that were grown in a 80% hydrofiber mix. So we really pushed the envelope here. And so um, there were some things that we did to tweak the mix to, to be able to grow in it at 80%. And uh, you know, if, if there's growers that want to go above 50%, uh, we, our technical reps can certainly help make a very customized recommendation for those growers that want to try it. Um, but the point is here is that it can be done. And, uh, and, it, and some of these situ uh, situations can help mitigate some of these raw materials, material shortages um, that we're facing right now. Uh, so this is another image, um, same set of trials, but actually was done in a different grower. And on the left-hand side, we have a plant that was 30% uh, hydrofiber. So this is very representative of what most of our customers start out. And then on the right-hand side, we see the mix with 80% hydrofiber. And uh, you know, we've seen several of these trials with mums and poinsettias. And when we make the right tweaks to the formulas um, and we advise the growers on some of the changes that they need to make with regards to irrigation strategy, pH management, things like that, you know, we get a situation where we have a marketable plant that looks fantastic. So if you really want to push the envelope and, and um, you're really in a pinch with regards to raw materials, um, here's just kind of a summary of things that we found um, from our experience. Um, number one, if you've been growing in 20 or 30% hydrofiber, um, I highly recommend looking at 40, 50%. You really are still in a relatively a normal zone, uh, or I would say completely normal zone uh, for growing in hydrofiber. We've got a lot of customers who have done it in the past for several years of crops uh, with chrysanthemums and poinsettias that we feel very comfortable with this. Um, the next thing I would say is be very strategic with your raw materials. And I'm not just talking about hydrofiber, I'm talking about whether you're using peat, bark, core, perlite, whatever it may be, look at what you have on hand and what you may have to, let's say, get through the rest of the year with and um, say to yourself, okay, well, I've got mums, I've got this many pots that I've got to grow this season, I'm gonna be doing poinsettias after, and I also may be doing pansies, okay? So uh, chrysanthemums and poinsettias, you know, typically are gonna be grown in larger pots, you know, six inch and above. And so that is a scenario where you could say, okay, I can shift this production to a higher percentage of hydrofiber, whereas my pansy production where I may be doing in 1006 packs, may say, okay, well, I'm gonna have more problems filling at 50% hydrofiber. So with pansies, I'm gonna be more strategic and maybe use 70 or 80% peat with 20 or 30% hydrofiber. So that's what I'm talking about as far as, you know, look at the, what are the raw materials you have to work with and then make decisions on how to best use those raw materials to get you through this year. Um, now, specifically with regards to growing in uh, mixes with over 50% hydrofiber, um, reduce lime rates. Again, I mentioned this earlier, uh, every 10% peat that you remove and replace with hydrofiber, reduce the lime rate by, by 10%. Now, when you go over 50%, you may be in a unique situation. And I would say that um, it may require the change of, a, of an actual lime input or lime source. And that's something that we can work with the grower one-on-one -on -one to help provide some very customized recommendations. Um, sticks to large containers as possible. I would say probably six inch and larger is probably about as uh, small of a container size if you're going to do uh, you know, above 50% hydrofiber. And the reason for that is because the more fibrous the mix is, the harder it is to flow through pot filling equipment. Um, so I think that from our experience that you can, you can work with like a 60 or 70% hydrofiber mix if you have to. Uh, through pot filling equipment in a six inch pot or larger. 
um, make good contact. Uh, what I'm talking about here, especially if you are doing um, mixes with uh, or drag stick program with uh, unrooted uh, chrysanthemums, you want to make sure that your dibble is almost exactly the same size as the cutting that you're putting into it so that you have good um, contact. If you don't have good contact, then uh, you may have some delayed rooting. One of the challenges with a hydrofiber mix that is uh, fibrous is it's not going to wash back in after you water it. And therefore, um, you know, it's not gonna be like a peat perlite mix, which will wash back in against the cutting. Uh, you may have to increase your irrigation. The research from Auburn has explained to us that when you go over 50%, your water holding capacity is going to um, be reduced. And so you may have to increase your irrigation frequency. I mentioned on the previous slides that nitrogen fixation typically is, is, is not going to be a problem at 50% or less. But what we see is when you start hitting 70, 80% um, inclusion rate, you're gonna need to supplement with a um, slow release nitrogen source in order to, to offset any nitrogen immobilization. With any growing media change, it's always important to test, test, test. So, um, you know, if, if you're going to 60, 70% hydrofiber for the first time, I highly recommend that you do routine media testing every week or every other week, whether it's you do it in your own lab or whether you, you send it off to um, a commercial lab. It's always important to track your pH and that way you know very early on if you have to make some corrections uh, to your pH, for example. Um, and then last and not uh, least is, uh, you know, we do have a product that Jennifer's going to talk about called Easy Blend. And one of the things about Easy Blend is that the physical properties of it are more optimized for growing at higher percentages of hydrofiber in the container. Uh, that, that's fantastic information. You gave us a good crash course in, uh, in, in how to how to grow the best crop using uh, with an inclusion of hydrofiber. I, I, I like that you talked about the greater than 50% because I do know that that's, I mean, that's really what kind of inspired this conversation is knowing that growers are really looking to replace some of those media components um, with a product like hydrofiber. Um, you talked about the irrigation management. I know that that's uh, part of the learning curve, but certainly one that can be overcome uh, pretty quickly. Um, you're right. The direct stick is, is becoming more and more common. And, um, you know, the, those tips you gave about the dibble hole size and everything is, is going to be very, very critical as gr growers move into, uh, into products like this. Um, and then of course the testing, I mean, that, that kind of goes without saying, but it's something that can be overlooked, especially when you're super busy in season. Yeah. So, you know, don't, don't hesitate to send some of that soil out for testing, do it in house. Um, train your teams to do that uh, because really like like any any aspect of growing it's really about know, knowing where you stand with the crop at that time so um, thank you very much Daniel I think that, that you gave a lot of fantastic information um, and it will help growers get a better better handle on the nuances because like you said there are there are particular nuances to this product so Jennifer as we start to, to wrap up and move from you know the the, the true technical side into a little bit more of a, a general discussion about, about the product itself. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about the new products coming out? Because I think that you guys are clearly a company that isn't sitting still. And uh, while I've got you guys, I'd love to hear about some of the new stuff in the works. Yeah, well, we appreciate that. And, I, and you're right, we aren't sitting still. I think, you know, what we're trying to do, honestly, is just continue to pivot and evolve so that we can provide the marketplace with some advanced uh, growing substrate solutions. You know, we started with our 50 pound uh, bales, which uh, you see in the middle of this slide, uh, for those of you following along, those are highly compressed. You know, one truckload of those materials will replace five truckloads of peat or eight truckloads of perlite. Um, the benefit is you get a lot of material on a truck, less unloading, less trucks to have to source, uh, less storage. Um, the downside, if there is one, is they're so compressed that they require a specialized piece of equipment. Um, however, we've partnered with the best equipment supplier in the marketplace, Agronomics, and they've installed over 100 of these machines already in the, in the market since we started, um, you know, less than 10 years ago. And every single one of those installations has been custom. So 
I would say for growers that are interested in and in, and in have a mix line, uh, and if they're concerned about you know not being able to fit a hydrofiber processing unit in or a hydrofiber expander, I would say call us or call Agronomics. Um, we have equipment available. Um, they are experts when it comes to trying to figure out how to maximize um, throughput through mix lines and to make sure that the customer gets a great um, a great blend result uh, with these 50 pound bales because they are by far and away are most compressed and they travel uh, the best. Um, for the folks that just don't have mix lines, don't have equipment, um, need something simpler, we actually introduced um, this tower uh, that you see on the left side of the screen. Uh, we have it available in our Easy Blend and our Ultra. Um, the Ultra towers are more compressed than the Easy Blend towers. Uh, we have customers that are pad mixing um, and bucket blending these uh, materials. We all have some customers that are using uh, peat shaving devices to expand and blend with these materials. And so we have a variety of growers using these materials in a variety of ways. Um, on the far right is a product we just uh, started selling in conjunction with fiber dust. Uh, so we have several growers out there that prefer to grow with a core based media. And so we work with fiber dust to create a product uh, that contains core and hydrofiber in the same compressed block. Um, so that's a product that's new to market. So that's a solution for folks that are already using core. This will actually expand in their core busters. Um, so there's no need for additional equipment. And the benefit is that you get core and hydrofiber in the same unit. And essentially all you have to do is amend it and you're on your way to growing in it. And so we do have some customers, especially in light of the shortage, who are now using these core blocks in addition with their hydrofiber and peat to make kind of a three component blend. Uh, kind of going back to what Daniel was saying a moment ago, you know, assess what you have and then use our material to help you extend through it. And then the last product, which I'm really excited about is this Hydrofiber Easy Blend Bale. Um, so this product is one of our least compressed products. Um, it's, it contains a bit more bark as Daniel mentioned. And so it um, has a bit more water holding capacity. So it can stand on its own a bit more than Hydrofiber, which has a, has a different water capac holding capacity to, compared to this one. And this product is available um, from select distributors now. So um, we, uh, we have, for the most part, a, a, a business model that's direct um, to the, the, the customer. Uh, this particular product, the Easy Blend uh, 40 pound bale um, is gonna be available through select distributors. So I would say if you're looking for something that's easy to get started with, um, doesn't require a lot of specialized equipment, uh, just wanna start dabbling in hydrofiber, I would say contact your local distributor and try the Easy Blend hydrofiber and 40 pound bales. Um, we have um, materials on our website, um, www.hydrofiber.com um, that you can access that tell you how to break this product apart and how to blend it. Um, but this is definitely a suitable option for folks that are running up, uh, running into shortages of materials. And I would say, you know, lastly, um, you know, we've been working very hard uh, since, uh, since uh, Daniel and I started Hydrofiber to really understand how to use Hydrofiber and how to use it at smaller percentages, 10, 15, 20%, which is where the market started. Um, but as Daniel mentioned, because of the situation where we are in now, we also have customers that are growing at 50, 60, 70% now, uh, just because they need an alternative to help them get through the, um, the situation that we are in now with the raw material shortages. Um, we're making product in our factory every day. Um, we're shipping product from our factory every day. And uh, I would say if you're struggling to get raw materials, you know, call us um, because we've been doing a lot of work to try to understand how to use hydrofiber at many different inclusion rates um, with many different raw materials and in all kinds of crops. That's great. And, you know, for, for those of you listening, I can vouch for the fact that in those photos, the product, uh, the mums grown in the 80% hydrofiber looked absolutely fantastic, whether that was the, the, the green and then, and the foliage or the roots, it was, uh, they, there was definitely, uh, no, no issue with plant quality, uh, looking at those trial photos. Uh, so I definitely think that that's a very important thing to think about. So Jennifer, uh, just a quick follow-up question. So you guys do have product on hand can be ordered right now. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're rocking and rolling. Yes, we do. And, you know, we're, we're shipping every day from our factory. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're trying to help uh, growers uh, the best we can come up with new formulations to help them through the season. I can't tell you the number of phone calls I've gotten kind of from panicked growers in the last 30 days, I would say that have said they can't get their raw material. And so, you know, as Daniel mentioned, we're all equipped to help come up with some custom solutions. 
uh, for growers. We've been investing a lot of time to understand how to pivot up or down in inclusion rates to help someone get through this, this, this season. And so I would say, um, call us and let us help you find the right solution. And uh, we can help you either get through this season or help you make a, a pivotal shift in your soil and media program. Excellent. Excellent. And that's a perfect segue to my final question, which is how do listeners get in touch with you guys? You mentioned the website. Maybe you could repeat that. You did send me some resources that I'm going to uh, include links to in the show notes, as well as the link to the video presentation for those of you uh, listening, or if you want to save that presentation to share with your team. Um, how, can, uh, how can listeners get in touch um, to continue the discussion or uh, they need to place a quick order? Yeah, I would say don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we do have a website, www.hydrofiber.com that contains all of our contact details for everybody on our team. Uh, we're also on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, you know, myself, uh, Jennifer, New Year, I have a LinkedIn profile. You're welcome to connect with me that way. Um, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, and also as Bill, you mentioned, you're going to be posting our materials, which will have our contact details. Uh, so hopefully you can find us. And I guess if nothing else, if all else fails, just call Bill Calkins because he knows where to find us too. I do. I do. And I'll, I'll give you uh, Jennifer's cell phone number. You can call her directly uh, at all hours. No, but, but honestly, I did go to uh, your website and was looking through some of the resources. There, there's a lot there. And I think that that's probably a really good start. Um, if you want to jump in and learn a little bit more about the product and view some of the videos, even uh, the, some of the behind the scenes stuff that you guys have is, is really, really good. So I really appreciate uh, all of your time today. Um, I, uh, I, I want to uh, thank you again for uh, Daniel for your deep dive into mums. I think that, you know, that's super timely right now. And, um, you know, every, every grower pretty much has grown mums, but, uh, you know, there, there are improvements that can be made every single year. Um, and certainly if you're moving to a new substrate or, or an, an amendment, um, there, there's, a, there's work to be done uh, with, with your grower team. So, and uh, Jennifer, thanks for your, your product overview and especially for that market overview. I think everybody likes to hear what's going on in the marketplace. Um, and perhaps we can plan to uh, catch up a little bit later uh, this year and talk about spring production because if folks have good success with garden moms, they're going to be using hydrofiber in the spring, right? We'd love to. Yeah, that would be great. You know, uh, we have a lot of experience in a lot of different crops. And so uh, I'd be happy to. Um, prepare something specific on things you need to think about when doing spring crop production. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. So uh, on behalf of Daniel and Jennifer at Profile, I'm Bill Calkins with Tech on Demand. I'm going to wish you a fantastic fall season and a fantastic spring season next year. Take care out there. <laughs>